From a red waterfall pouring out of an ancient glacier, to hidden lakes teeming with alien-like life, to a mind-blowing new map revealing the wild landscape under the ice, it's getting harder to ignore what's going down in Antarctica. These are terrifying discoveries in the South Pole scientists can no longer ignore. Antarctica has to be one of the most otherworldly places in the world. Most of it is buried under miles of ice, so for a long time nobody really knew what the land underneath even looked like. But we're starting to get a much better picture of it now. Scientists from the British Antarctic Survey just dropped the most detailed map ever made of what's hiding underneath all that ice. We're talking about over 60 years of data collected from satellites, aircraft, and ships combined into one map massive project called Bedmap 3. And the result is a crazy detailed look at the actual shape of the continent without the ice. Turns out there are giant mountains, deep valleys, and one unnamed canyon in Wilkes Land where the ice is over 4,700 meters thick or 15,420 feet. Bedmap 3 is giving researchers a much clearer view of how the ice sheet connects with the land and the ocean, which is a big deal when it comes to figuring out sea level rise and how the ice might move in the future. So who knows what kind of cool discoveries discoveries are going to come to light in the very near future. There's a glacier in Antarctica that bleeds. Red liquid seeps out of the ice like something died in there. It's called the BLOD Falls. It's one of the weirdest things on the continent. For a long time, nobody could figure out where the red color came from. People thought it was algae at first. Makes sense. Red stains usually means something biological, but it's not. It's salt water loaded with iron. And when that water hits the air, the iron oxidizes and turns red. Basically, it rusts. So what you're seeing is rusted salt water flowing out of a glacier like an open wound. But where does that water come from? It's not from melting ice, it's from a hidden lake trapped underneath the glacier which has been cut off from the surface for millions of years. There's no sunlight down there, no oxygen, it's nothing, just cool, dark, high pressure water. But somehow there's still life in it. Microbes, tiny organisms that don't need light or air, they survive entirely on the chemical reactions in that trapped water. Pretty incredible. If life can survive in a place like that under ice in total isolation, then maybe they can survive anywhere, even on frozen planets. That's not the only hidden lake in Antarctica. There are lots of lakes under the ice. Not frozen lakes, liquid water. Lakes that are buried under miles of ice that have also been sealed off from the surface for millions of years. One of the most famous is Lake Vostok. It's about the size of Lake Ontario, but it sits nearly two and a half miles under the surface. Scientists spent years drilling down to it, carefully trying not to contaminate it. When they finally pulled up water samples, what they found was complicated. There were signs of life, strange microbial life, but people argued over whether it was real or just contamination from the drill. Other subglacial lakes were also found, over 400 of them. In 2020, they confirmed microbes in one called the Lake Mercer. These organisms don't rely on photosynthesis or oxygen. They live off chemicals in the rock and sediment. Basically, they just eat minerals and keep going. This kind of life changes everything. It's not like what we know. It doesn't need sunlight, warmth, or an atmosphere, and that means it could exist on other planets. Europa, Enceladus, potentially Mars, if it ever had underground water. Now, I think about 1% of the videos I do on here do not include any talk of pyramids, and this is not one of those videos. Let's talk about pyramids, the so-called Antarctica pyramids. If you've ever seen a photo of them, you know what I'm talking about. Giant triangle-shaped peaks sticking out of the snow. They seem to look way too symmetrical to be natural. People online love to claim they're evidence of some lost civilization like Atlantis or aliens. Here's what we actually know. These formations are real. You can find them on satellite images, and expeditions have even photograph them up close. The most famous is part of the Ellsworth Mountains, the highest mountain range in Antarctica. From certain angles, it looks exactly like a pyramid. Sharp edges, flat faces. Geologists say it's probably a type of mountain called a nunatak, basically a rocky peak that sticks out above the surrounding ice sheet. Wind and erosion can carve the rock into all kinds of shapes, and yeah, sometimes that shape just happens to look like something man-made. It's not impossible. 
Nature is weird, but there's more than one of these pyramid-shaped structures, and some of them are miles apart but still line up in a way that seems deliberate. Are they just coincidences? Maybe, but nobody's really gone down there with a proper team to study them closely. It's remote, expensive, and dangerous. Until someone does, they'll stay in that uncomfortable gray area. Maybe just extra pointy mountains, maybe something more. Deep Lake is one of the weirdest, most extreme environments on the planet. It hides what are called extremophiles, basically tiny life forms that just don't seem like they should be alive in such brutal conditions. Deep Lake is found in East Antarctica, and it's been sealed off from the outside world for thousands of years. The water is super salty, five to ten times saltier than the ocean. The salinity is so high that the lake never freezes over, but there's no light down there, barely any nutrients, and it's in the middle of a frozen wasteland. It's not like the water's warm, it just doesn't freeze. Sounds like a place where life would go to die, except life hasn't died. Scientists have discovered entire communities of microbes living down there. They've completely adapted to the cold, the salinity, and the isolation. Some even have completely unique DNA sequences we haven't seen anywhere else. This raises two big questions. First, how the hell did they get there in the first place? And second, what else could be out there surviving in these impossible conditions? Because the more we look, the more we realize how little we actually understand about what counts as habitable. You'd think Antarctica would be the last place on Earth you'd worry about volcanoes. I mean, it's a frozen wasteland, right? Well, turns out not exactly. Underneath all that ice, there are at least 138 volcanoes, and some of them might still be active. Scientists only started finding these volcanoes recently, thanks to radar and satellite technology that can see through miles of ice. One of the biggest clusters is under the West Antarctic ice sheet. That's a problem, because if even one of those volcanoes erupts, it could destabilize the ice above it, and when that happens, massive chunks could slide into the ocean, raising sea levels around the world. Some researchers actually think eruptions might already be happening. Not big lava spewing explosions, but geothermal activity strong enough to melt ice from below. They found areas where the ice is thinner than it should be, with strange plumes of heat rising from deep underground. Combine that with shifting ice and seismic activity, and it's hard to ignore. There's still a lot we don't know. The ice hides everything, and most of these volcanoes have never been studied up close. But the idea that an entire volcanic system is quietly simmering beneath the South Pole, that's not something you could just shrug off. If one of these hidden giants wakes up, the effects could be felt far beyond Antarctica. Next up, we have ghost anemones. These things were discovered clinging to the underside of Antarctica's Ross Ice Shelf. In a place so cold, so dark, and so cut off from the rest of the world, it feels like they shouldn't even exist. And yet, there they were. Researchers found them by accident back in 2010. A team had drilled a hole nearly 900 feet down in the ice to drop some instruments into the water, but instead of just equipment readings, they got footage of these weird, translucent creatures hanging upside down, attached right onto the underside of the ice. No one expected to see life, let alone something this bizarre. They look like these tiny white flowers, but with tentacles, and they're animals. A new species of anemone never seen before. Nobody really knows how they're surviving. There's almost no light, no obvious food source. The temperatures are sub-zero. But these ghost anemones are just there like they've always been. And here's where it gets extra weird. Anemones usually live on the sea floor, not the ceiling. So these things seem to have completely flipped the script on how we think marine life should behave. If you picture Antarctica, odds are you're thinking of endless snow, glaciers, maybe a few penguins. What you're probably not imagining is a rainforest. That's exactly what scientists found buried deep beneath the ice, the fossilized remains of an ancient forest that used to exist in the South Pole. Back in 2018, a research team drilling through the ice on the Emmonsden Sea coast pulled up sediment cores from 90 feet down. Mixed in with the usual rock and mud were roots, pollen, and fossilized leaves, all from about 
90 million years ago when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. Turned out that Antarctica wasn't always frozen solid. Back in the mid Cretaceous period it was warm and humid, kind of like modern day New Zealand. Trees grew thick and tall and the area would have been covered in dense swampy forests. It was, it was probably so warm there wasn't any ice at all at the poles during the time. Instead Antarctica was home to ancient reptiles, insects and who knows what else. Kind of crazy how well preserved some of this plant material is. Scientists could actually identify specific types of trees and ferns, which tells us a lot about the Earth's climate back then. Antarctica is said to be one of the quietest places on Earth, and it makes sense. If you've ever lived in a place with big snowfalls, you know how much the snow and ice can dampen sound. Plus, in Antarctica's case, there's nobody around, but beneath all that ice, the continent actually hums, literally. Scientists discovered this eerie low frequency sound. The ice itself seems to be singing. It's not something you can hear with your ears unless it's sped up. But when researchers first recorded it, the noise was unsettling. Take a listen. So that was first picked up by seismic sensors planted on the Ross ice shelf, a slab of ice about the size of France. 2014 researchers noticed that the sensors were picking up steady vibrations like the ice was pulsing. First they thought it might be wind or maybe equipment interference, but no, it was the ice itself vibrating. As winds whip across the surface and temperatures rise and fall, the snow dunes on top of the ice itself shift slightly. That movement creates pressure waves that travel through the ice, making it kind of sing. What's spooky about this though is that scientists now use it as a kind of warning system. When the ice starts singing differently, if the pitch shifts or the vibrations change, it might mean the shelf is weakening or cracking. If big chunks of Antarctica's ice shelves start to break apart, it can trigger a chain reaction that messes with sea levels around the world. So sometimes this singing is actually a bad omen. In 2022, satellite images of Antarctica picked up something weird. A rectangular opening carved into the side of a mountain. It looked like a doorway almost. Not a random crack or shadow, but this almost clean looking geometric shape that seemed completely out of place somewhere as remote as Antarctica. Scientists were of course quick to say it was natural, but the image doesn't exactly scream random to some people and it got some of them talking. Hidden base, ancient ruins, some theories say it's man-made, maybe part of a secret military project. Others think it could be proof of a lost civilization, something wiped out in a forgotten chapter of Earth's history. Again, Atlantis level stuff, but there hasn't been an official expedition to check it out, at least not that we know of. It's just not exactly at the top of anyone's to-do list. All that said, I've been your host James, and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.